Welcome everybody. This is How to English. Teach and learn with Gav and M. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal and references will be given when necessary. Ready to go, Gav? I am ready. Are you ready? Rearing to go. In that case, let's go. Broom. Where are we going? We are going to discuss the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative, according to Oxford Languages. So you mean inspiration, Gav? <laughs> How did you get that so quickly? Well, I had a clue, but you, you made it sound like we were going to a place. It sounded nice. We are going to... The place of discussion within the yeah. conversation of the, let me repeat, the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. That sounds a bit like our show, Em. <laughs> I hope so. It's very clinical, isn't it, that description? It sounds almost medical or scientific. I guess so. Maybe things do sound simple when you strip them back to their basics. Mm. But I'm wondering about inspiration. It seems like a magical thing, something you can't really pinpoint or put your finger on. Yeah, because every time I think of it, I think of motivation. So I uh -huh. need to go back and think, what sparked that moment that propelled me forward into the world of creating? Is it a series of things or is it one little thing? It could be both, maybe. Um, I am very interested in this word, you know. Are you really? Yeah. You're more, I, I'm guessing you're more interested in the, the reasons or the things that create the inspiration. No, I'm more interested in the things that we create, the product that comes at the end. Oh, are you? Interesting. So it's not about the, the initial spark, it's about the end result. Yeah. Wow. Are we going to discuss all this today? No, we're going to talk about inspiration because that's today's topic. So, M, okay. Gav, ask me a question. What inspires you to... Isn't that a good question? Don't they ask that in interviews? What inspires you? To get up every day, to switch on my computer, to walk into the classroom and say to my students, good morning, how was your weekend? <laughs> I call that motivation, actually. I think this is where the lines get blurred. No, inspiration. What makes you want to create something or do something that you haven't done before or go somewhere that you haven't been? I became a teacher. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. New question. What inspired you to become a teacher? Oh, I like that question, Em. So we scratched the earlier bit. No, I quite okay. liked it, but I, you should have been more clear about what you wanted me moving to Moving on. Yeah, moving on. Em, that's a great question. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with my life. And my mum, hello mum, I know you're listening. <laughs> Thanks for being our biggest fan. Aww. And uh, my mum said, I know a person who has a son and this son is off in some exotic country teaching English. And I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. That's very different from what I imagined my life would be like. And that could possibly be a good experience. So that was the initial spark of perhaps it's possible. I think so, because I was already interested in English, in language, in literature and um I thought maybe it could be an interesting direction. So I tried an online TEFL course, which I really enjoyed, which had a weekend in Cambridge. And it was a great experience. And I suddenly thought, oh, I quite like being a bit creative with language and engaging people. And I'm a little bit from a drama background as well, mm. I have to confess. Mm. So that was good too. So I brought a lot of my character into the teaching for this course And after this very brief online course, I applied for a position as an English teacher in a summer school mm -hmm. for a couple of months. And it was quite difficult, but I really, really enjoyed it. And then I thought, right, I'm going to go to China and I'm going to teach little kids from mm -hmm. the ages of five to 19. And it was an amazing experience. But I realized I didn't really have the skills and the qualifications I needed 
to really teach the way foreign learners need to be taught. So I decided to do a CELTA. And then I returned to Europe, I did my CELTA, and then I carried on working, living in Europe and teaching. And the rest, as they say, is history. It is. So that all of that came from one conversation. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. You've got a lot to thank your mum for. I do. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that spark of inspiration. Yeah. And I think as well, now we are, let's say, fully fledged teachers that have been through all of the training and we do this every day. I think we realise as well how much we can inspire as uh, as you were inspired we have a lot of power in our jobs to inspire other people. I hope to do that in my classes every day. I hope to invigorate my students with that curiosity that yeah. will keep them engaged within the language and also inspired by the topics that come up. Yeah, absolutely. I was just listening to something the other day. I can't remember what it was, but there was something about a little girl who was putting pictures all over her bedroom and one of her parents said oh what's all this what are you doing all this for and the little girl said my teacher said I'm an artist wow and before that she really didn't have any confidence in her drawing skills but just that one phrase just that that teacher saying you are an artist was enough for this little girl to think she was that's amazing. What a great story. Yeah, it was lovely. And I, I have to remind myself of these things because we do have a lot of power. And even, you know, school teachers, I would say even more so if they're teaching kids and in that sort of everyday way, even EFL teachers have a lot of opportunity to inspire. Like you said, if you're enthusiastic about a topic, that rubs off and your students start to find things interesting that perhaps they never would and vice versa. That's where I was going to go, Em. Mm. I'm also inspired by my students and the things they say. And I then find out about what they're interested in. Yeah. Like what? For, does anything come to mind? Well, they might tell me that there's some event on at the weekend or maybe they've tried something in a restaurant. And I think, oh, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Or they've been somewhere on holiday. I've had uh, students saying how fantastic this place was. And then I've thought, oh, I'm going to go there. That sounds great. And just their hobbies and their interests. My students have got some really diverse interests like... Baking. Yeah. Gardening. Of course. Like, not just gardening, but carnivorous plants for example really and uh beekeeping and other really interesting hobbies i would never have looked at and then as a result of the lesson i've thought oh i'm gonna find out a bit about that and mm -hmm. gone down a, a whole avenue of investigation of what kind of plants you can get and how they live and what they eat and how amazing just to get that from just a conversation i've found myself in exactly the same place when i've finish the lesson and I look at my browser and all of the windows I've got <laughs> open and think, wow, these are really diverse and unusual topics that we just covered in the lesson. And then, yeah, I'm inspired to continue reading all about these topics so we can discuss them in further detail next week. Yeah, exactly. It can also help you in your lessons that you take that in and the students, you know, they're going to be interested because they're already talking about it and then they're interested themselves anyway. Yeah, it can challenge us, which is really cool, because these might be topics that we've never come across before. So we might need to do some research beforehand in order to have a meaningful conversation and to explore the language that's necessary within the English lesson. And you never know, you might end up having your own little garden of carnivorous plants. That is true. Em, I wonder if we could change topics for a bit and just explore the inspiration for our podcast. Sure. Because I think maybe, just maybe, our followers might be interested. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind, I'll just talk about it for a moment. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just listen. Well, no, you, you, you supported me throughout this. I mean, we're, we're a good team, um, good partnership. Definitely. I would like to know where your inspiration came from, because you were the one that inspired me to do it. And then I didn't even question really how you came up with the idea. So what was your inspiration, Gav? 
really, it came from a couple of podcasts that I was listening to at the time. And I thought, if they can do it, we can do it. Oh, so it was what, like a challenge to yourself to see if you could reach that sort of level or do something similar? Yes. And also, I was looking around at TEFL podcasts, EFL podcasts, and just thinking, there isn't something exactly like what I want to listen to, where there are a couple of people maybe interested in the topic and they could discuss EFL from different points of view and maybe have some interesting guests. There are some fabulous podcasts out there about TEFL, Mm. but there wasn't something exactly what I was looking for. So I thought the best thing to do is to make it yourself. That's what they say, isn't it? If you can't find what you want, make it yourself. Or if you can't find the podcast you want, make your own podcast. That's it. And that's what drove me to do it. So what I wanted to just mention was that led me to develop some skills that I didn't have before For example, I learnt how to do recordings, edit, how to contact guests and make adverts, all the marketing that went along with it, as well as developing and becoming part of an amazing community of online English teachers and learners. Right. So all those skills were self-taught. Wow. And this inspiration of creating the pod led to a more fulfilling life. Okay. (laughs) It sounds very philosophical, doesn't it? Well, that is true. So why not just say it? I mean, I I think it is definitely life enhancing. Um, Do you happen to remember what those podcasts were were that you were listening to? I do. But, you know, I've just abandoned them now. I think I've moved on because, (laughs) to be honest, they weren't diverse enough for me. Oh, okay. They sort of served their purpose just as a beginning. Yeah. Spring, what is it called? A springboard. A springboard. A stepping stone. A stepping stone. I think it might be neither of those. <laughs> springboard sounds good. Yeah, but I didn't use it in. Oh, mm. it was your way of getting to the next point. Or all right, anyway, um, that was all you took from it. Yes. And you've moved on since. Exactly. Exactly. I've definitely grown as a person and I hope that the podcast has grown with us as we've both worked together to create the best show possible. Oh I think you can say for sure we've really developed our skills and I'm so much more aware of things now like talking in this way and also just collecting my thoughts a bit more and uh yeah, mulling over what we're going to talk about each week is quite good practice, I think. You mean you prepare for these? Not like note taking, but I do have a lot of thoughts about it. And so then from those thoughts come other ideas. And okay. Let's say inspiration comes from that as well. That's nice. Well, I've been talking a lot, Em. I'm sure that the followers would love to hear a little bit more about your inspirations. Is there anything that comes to mind when you think about what inspires you? Maybe an inspiring moment in your life? <laughs> um, I feel a bit like you did about podcasts in the sense of teaching as well. I went to a lot of observations, especially during CELTA. So at the point where I knew I wanted to be a teacher but didn't have any idea about what teaching was about or what kind of teacher I wanted to be, I saw a lot of observation uh, or I saw a lot of teachers in their classrooms and a lot of those people inspired me because I saw how they taught and I saw how their students responded to them and I thought, all right, that's how I want to do it. That's what I want my students to be like. Um, I don't know what the opposite of inspiration is, but there were also teachers that didn't inspire their students and I also took that into account as well. That's a really good question. What's the opposite of inspiration? Demotivation, I guess, or... Just the killing of a dream. <laughs> I don't know. The putting out of hope. Um, Hindrance? Yeah. Hurdle. But that in itself is an inspiration to, to not be like that. So Disincentive. Um, yep. It's not really the equivalent, but okay. I, all of those things. But Thanks, word hippo. <laughs> those teachers really pushed me as well, the way those podcasters pushed you. Yeah, that's a really good point. I have definitely been inspired by a lot of teachers, just the way that they speak or behave or perform within the classroom space. 
and as you say, the way the students react to them. So we've talked about people inspiring us, like your mum, for example, and other teachers inspiring us and podcasters inspiring us and the podcast itself being inspirational. But there's also a whole area we haven't mentioned, like novels and films and songs and artists and all these wonderful things that exist in the world Mm -hmm. that inspire us and make us want to create something or do something. You're right. Um, Actually, I have a lot of my students coming to me saying, I read a really fantastic book and there was this film I watched and I just came back from the cinema and we discussed these media and it really is inspiring for the students and we get so much out of these conversations. Mm. And just uh, also teaching new people and them telling us what books they read, what films they watch, TV programmes, also different cultures It's a wonderful thing to do with your life, to encourage and have this encouragement on both sides. Mm -hmm. When it's working, it's great. Absolutely. Well, talking of students, I've got three of my students here, not literally here, well, here in in the ether, who are going to talk about their inspirations. Lovely. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So I asked them, What inspired you to learn English? Mm -hmm. And I've got some interesting answers. Would you like to listen? Definitely. Okay. Have a listen to Joachim, and he will describe to us who his inspiration is and why he is improving his English. I would say that the most inspirational person was my father, because he always told me how English is essential and always gave me examples of how he had his business meetings in English, but his English wasn't good enough and he couldn't speak and understand correctly, so his partners may think that he isn't smart enough. Also, we used to watch films together, but most of them were in English, so it wasn't that enjoyable because we needed to have subtitles turned on to understand what is happening. So that is why I started to learn English and wanted to get better and better at it. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, that's great. I think every father wants to be the inspiration of their child. You can't force it, Gav. It just happens, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm, lovely. What a nice inspiration to learn English as well, so he can understand films. That was it, without subtitles. Yeah, really good. And also the idea of thinking ahead that one day you might be sitting in an office or on a video conference and everybody speak in English and you need to answer and ask your own questions during that video conference. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that my student will be ready for that because his English is fabulous. <laughs> nice. Em, now let's listen to my student Reiner talk about his experience of learning English. So, yeah, my my reasons for learning English. Um, yeah, uh, we have to we have to learn uh, English in school. Uh, about uh, in Germany, about uh, class number five, uh, we start learning English. Um, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So I think today the kids are learning English also in the kindergarten. Sometimes uh, they start in kindergarten or in, in the first class, second class. And uh, we have to learn it uh, in class five. And um, yeah, we had a really good teacher. Um, and we make the, the, the lessons funny and uh, interesting, so it was uh, what it was very good. Uh, um, and we have fun at, at school. Um, also, yes, we were, sometimes we are also a little bit lazy with the vocabulary and with the grammar. I think that was the, the problem in school. Um, yeah, and uh, learning English, I think, was very good for for my whole life to understand some lyrics in music or watch some English movies. Uh, also, when I went to holiday, um, almost I think everybody in the world can speak uh, a few words English or good English, or so you can talk to everybody uh, in, in in holiday and. All the food, all the beer, the, the, the basics, yes. Uh, ask for a way, um, things like that. I think, uh, yeah, it's really important to, to learn to learn English and, and, and to know uh, English. Yeah. And Reiner, how was your teacher inspirational? 
uh, inspirational, yeah. She was funny and she, she pushed us always uh, to learn our vocabulary, of course. And um, yeah, she, she had always um, some, I think some movies and, and, and uh, things uh, to watch and to learn uh, for us. Um, so not, 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 not boring, uh, no, no boring teaching. Um, and that was the reason I think we learned uh, English very well at school. So it was okay. There's always a teacher, isn't there? There's always a teacher that you can remember as being an inspirational teacher. Who do you think of when you think of a teacher? Oh, Mrs. Smith, she was wonderful. We used to sit under the apple tree and uh, would look at leaves and she would tell us all about nature. Really? Yeah. Wow, you had a different kind of education from me. That's lovely. <laughs> Mrs. Smith. Okay. Yeah. Small classes those days. Right. It was nice. Nice okay. memories. Okay, lovely. But yeah, Ryan has said a lot of really good points, didn't he? I think that, um, again, that inspiration to understand things like films and songs, it's really, really important, I think, when you love something that much that you want to learn mm -hmm. what it means. It could be essential for your future again. Like, if you're travelling, you really need to speak English because there's a good chance the waiting staff will speak English, the menu might be in English. So these are great skills to have. Yeah, and I think inspiration can be from a more like what's necessity and what you feel is going to make your life easier that can inspire you to learn something, but just also from an enjoyment side as well. So I think Reiner really showed both of those ways of being inspired. Who's next, Gav? Next, we've got Lothar describing his inspiring journey into English. I think my um, teacher didn't inspire me uh, in any kind because um, I uh, came 1993 to Germany and um, I couldn't speak German. I only could speak Russian. So it was hard for me to learn um, German and integrate myself in the German culture. So maybe it was too much for me to learn another language in the same time. Um, and um, the schools where I was uh, weren't cool or um, interactive or inspirating, you know. So um, I almost uh, left the class at the end of the year and changed my school. Uh, but in my um, private time, I started to listen to English music, um, just sometimes pop, Michael Jackson, for example, or Madonna. Um, I think in the 90s it was cool. Or um, Dr. Alban. I don't know if you, if you know him. It was, it it was really um, famous to, uh, at this time. And... Afterwards, I came to hip hop and rap, and I always liked to um, to the kind of speaking or um, you know dissing of people in English. It it was I don't know um, when I listen to German music or Russian music, it's not the same, you know. So it uh, it was. Um, always um it was always a big wish of, of mine to to learn this language but i always had to to work or to to make some other things so um i didn't decide um it's maybe 10 years ago but uh five years ago um i was in turkey and i couldn't speak to my um brother-in-law so uh, because he's Turkey and he couldn't speak also um, English and um, but he is a really famous guy. So um, it was uh, really um, an, an aim for me to uh, when I when I come to visit him again, I will speak uh, better English and uh, also for my job. So I started to go to school again at the evening maybe two times per week 
And <clears throat> after this time, I flew to um, Ireland and um, just had four weeks where I have an intensive course. And um, that's improved um, my English. And now I continue to, to improve my English. And also, um, I am in some groups, uh, some online groups where we play some games. It is, it is really not, not matter what, what we are playing, but the groups there and the guys there are talking really funny in English. And th this is also an inspiration uh, for me uh, because I, I really like this language and I really like to, to speak in the same kind like the English or American people. Wow. So as Rainer was talking about an amazing teacher that inspired him, we have the opposite situation there with Lothar, who had no inspiration, but still managed to get somewhere with his English in a completely different way. Exactly. It was inspiring to listen to pop music in the 90s. It must have been such an exciting time where all of these cool people coming from the US, coming from Britain, were singing all these fantastic, catchy songs. And um, I'm really sorry, but I don't know who Dr. Alban is, but I'm going to... You've inspired me. You've inspired me, Lothar. I'm going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's your homework, Em. Yeah. So, yeah, that's such an inspiration to follow your favourite pop group and learn what they're singing about and also learning how to interact with other people while you're playing games. I know online gaming is huge. It's, it's so big, especially with my younger students. And I know that they're often chatting with other people. And of course, the default language is often English. Yeah, I think the common theme running through all of this is communication and understanding. Mm -hmm. I think this desire to understand something like yeah. Lothar said about music, rap music. Yeah. And that is such a force, isn't it, to be able to understand, but then also, you know, the opposite side, to be able to communicate your ideas with sure. his uh, brother-in-law. Yeah. You know, that is just what you need. You need something in your life that makes you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's some really good examples mm -hmm. from your students. What great students you've got. I know, I'm so lucky. They're very good at talking. Thank you very much to Joachim, Reiner and Lothar. Brilliant. And for this final part, I'd like to give you some inspirational quotes. Nice. So, you know, when you're scrolling through your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter feed, and you see those quotes come up with the beautiful bouquet of flowers in the background or the autumnal view <laughs> across the landscape, and you read the caption, only a short paragraph, maybe just a few lines, and you think, oh, that has inspired me to be the best person I can be today. Inspirational quotes. If you Google that, there are hundreds of thousands of results, aren't there? Em, um, they don't need to Google it. I've got some. <laughs> okay, have you chosen your favourite ones? Well, I've chosen some that are kind of linked to today's lesson. So I'd like to say thanks to Will at English Live, also to the Intrepid Guide and Talk to Canada. I've just pinched some of their best uh -huh. ones. Okay. So let me tell you the quote the inspirational quote, an M, you can tell me who made that quote. Oh, it's another Gav quiz. It is. How am I going to know? To have another language is to possess a second soul. Nice. Um, I have no idea. Was it someone like a novelist? It was Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Uh -huh. Possibly one of the most famous quotes about language learning. So well done, Em. You will <laughs> definitely get that right next time you go to a pub quiz. Mm. Next one. Language is wine upon the lips. Language is wine upon the lips. What's that? Like sweet and makes you feel good? I wouldn't have a clue. Just tell me, Gav. It's Virginia Woolf. Oh, I should know that one. Mm, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful quote. And really? I hope everybody's playing along at home. Now, next one. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. I know this one. I definitely know this one. I've heard this many times in EFL workshops. It's really good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah. We should all bear that in mind. 
And I don't know who said it. It's Benjamin Franklin. Uh Uh-huh. Good. Very, very nice. So I thought you were going to say dance like nobody's watching and what is it? I don't know how it goes, but yeah. But no, those those were very relevant and I like them. I like them too. Right, we've got three more. Do you know what a foreign accent is? It's a sign of bravery. Isn't that beautiful? Do you want me to read it again? Yeah, I need to think about that one. Do you know what a foreign accent is? It's a sign of bravery. Wow. That's absolutely wonderful. That's from Amy Chow. Mm, That's a writer, isn't it? Yes, an American lawyer, legal scholar and writer, M. Well done. Next one. To learn a language is to have one more window from which to look at the world. Oh, nice. So I don't know any of these. Just tell me. It's a Chinese proverb. Oh. I didn't really expect to know that one. Okay, last one. I think that you're quite a big fan of this novelist, wrote quite a nice book. Now, mistakes, call them unexpected learning experiences. <laughs> That's a bit like, it's not a problem, it's a challenge. I'm I'm definitely familiar with it, but I can't remember the name. Who was it? It's Richard Bach. I think he's the novelist, wrote uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Ah, wow. Fantastic book. Quite a big fan of that one, aren't you? Oh, I'm very nice, Gav. You're very welcome, Em. I didn't say thank you, but <laughs> very nice. I'm glad you enjoyed the activity. Right, we're going to finish off with some shout-outs, Em. Shout-outs! Yes, just very quick, because um, we don't want to keep the people too long. So, uh, let me start. Special thanks to all of these IG teachers and learners, starting with English underscore with dot underscore dot Kushki double I. English underscore with underscore Amargan. English underscore with underscore Rehane underscore. Avat language. English underscore with Arshida. MF underscore Lopez123. English dot Ellis. Improve underscore my underscore pronunciation. That is a wonderful handle, isn't it? I like that one. <laughs> JA English Coach. English by Sanja. Vicky Kelty. F. Zamani 1376NN. Thank you, Fatime. And finally, Lingo Chick, who've got a fantastic picture of a little yellow chick on their IG account. Cute. So thank you to all of them. You are an inspiration for us to keep working hard on our podcast. Yes. We can only hope that we're inspiring some people out there with our hard work and podcast magic. <laughs> Gav, I'd like to introduce the song this week. Please do, Em. This is a song from John Beton, and John is a TEFL and TESOL tutor of English who specialises in business English, pronunciation, public speaking and conversations, exam preparation and building confidence in his students. He likes to make uh, his lessons dynamic and Mm student-led. A man after my own heart. Sounds like our kind of teacher. Definitely. Um, He was formerly an accountant. Uh Uh, Now he's a teacher. But he's also very much a talented musician and he performs in hotels and restaurants and cafes. That sounds absolutely fantastic. And what is the name of the song, M? The name of the song is Family Man. Aha. Very catchy, this one. Yep. Have you heard it yet? I have, and I like it very much. It's very inspirational. It is. And it's an absolutely delightful song about focusing on yourself in order to succeed and support your family and look after those that you care for. He really inspires me to look after myself and his song is so positive sounding and the piano piece is great. So it is really inspirational and we should all bear in mind, you've got to look after yourself. As they say in the aeroplane, put on your own mask before you help others with their masks. That is great advice. Well, anyway, John can explain it better than us. Let's have a listen. My shirt's a thermal, my tea is herbal. I'm just looking after myself. I'm eating healthy, but I'm still not wealthy. 
my pulse is rising, I'm exercising, I'm just looking after myself, to bed before 10 but the kids are screaming, I'm just taking care of myself, cause now I'm a family man and I'm working so hard just to pay for it all, oh yeah, cause I But you should hear them I'm just taking care of my ears My girl's the best is if she gives it a rest So I'm just looking after my ears My sisters hate me Ain't seen them lately I'm just taking care of myself My ma adores me She did everything for me But now I'm looking after myself Cause now I'm a fan Yeah.